He kind of minimizes his, his reps in an effort to get more productivity. You know, we just trying to rep manage in terms of the totality of the big picture. Um, he wasn't less of a focal point in terms of our intentions of what we wanted to do offensively, but we did want to cut his reps a little bit in an effort to get higher quality play uh, just in general. Mike Tomlin with a BS answer talking about George Pickens' lack of snaps on Sunday. He only played 59% of the snaps. Now the All-22 has come out, folks. That means we got a bird's eye view of what was going on. And I saw this from Warren Sharp of Sharp Football. Sometimes I disagree with his analytical-based arguments. Sometimes I disagree with his film arguments. But he made a compelling case through video that George Pickens was going through the motions on Sunday in a lot of instances. And this corroborates what we heard from Mark Cabola yesterday on our show. No. So the the on-the-field stuff from George Pickens, not good enough. You could tell when the Steelers were going to run the ball because he wasn't getting off the snap and putting a hat on a hat. He just had no interest in blocking. He was running some routes at like 70% speed. And then we had Kaboli talk about what was happening with George Pickens on the sideline. Look, Kaboli, he wasn't unemployed very long. Kaboli, one of the longest tenured beat writers in this city, nay, America, for a reason. It's because he brings his binoculars to the games. He's watching the things other people don't watch. Mark Kaboli on George Pickens' body language. Either he thinks we're stupid, which, you know, could be the truth, but my goodness, you think we're going to buy this one? That we're just trying to, you know, limit his reps, sort of like the 38-year-old defensive line and just had his groins ripped off of his pelvis area. No, there's something going on here. I mean, I don't know what. I'll tell you what, what part of the game was very fascinating to me. I might have missed an entire quarter, but the binoculars on the bench watching George Pickens re- – was very entertaining and uh, it reminds me of the time of I used to do that with Ben and AB when they would just totally ignore each other the strangest thing ever then they would come back on a Wednesday and say yeah we're just friends you guys are just making up stuff no I saw you not talking to the quarterback and the receiver at all that's not the case terrible body language throwing helmets and I'm not going to say specific names here but he, this one time, and I was just shocked. He went over, was not happy that he was probably not playing, sat on a bench next to a player. The player immediately got up, walked two benches to the right, and sat next to the punter. Mm. Wow. Mm. I was like, whoa. That's alarming, but it's not unexpected. It's not surprising. George Pickens got drafted where he got drafted, yes, because of the injury concerns, but because there were quote-unquote red flags. Go back, read some of the scouting reports. Some more scathing than others, but a lot of the draft Knicks said, this guy could be a problem. And he's going to a place where there's been problems with wide receivers for a long time. And there's problems around the league. Wide receivers want the ball when they don't get it. They mope. CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott got into it a little bit. On Sunday, the difference between C.D. Lamb and George Pickens, though, is that C.D. Lamb is a wide receiver number one, and George Pickens is trying to be one. Here's where the reframe comes in: all off season long, and throughout this whole Devonte Adams saga here, we've said, "Oh God, the Steelers need a hashtag wide receiver too." Van Jefferson, eight catches for 62 yards. That's not good enough. Look at what Juju did yesterday, for goodness sake. Calvin Austin, eight catches for 131 yards. That's 26 yards per game. That's not wide receiver wide receiver two stuff. That's not wide receiver three stuff. That's just not good enough. Scotty Miller has two catches. The leading receiver on Sunday was Najee Harris. Do the Steelers need a wide receiver too? Sure they do. But guess what? He's on the roster. The Steelers don't need to go acquire Devontae Adams to be their number two. They don't need to go out and comb over the trade list 
to find a wide receiver two. No, they need a wide receiver one because George Pickens ain't it. If you're going to argue with me at 412-928-9370, ask yourself this question. Would you pay this guy $30 million a season? You can text us at 412-928-9370, brought to you by Edgar Steiner and Associates, a personal injury law firm. They always say there's never a fee unless we get money for you. You can give us a ring, 412-928-9370, fan hotline presented by Sullivan Super Service, Pittsburgh trusted plumbing and HVAC provider for over 50 years. If your answer right now is no, I'm not paying George Pickens $30 million a season, you've got your answer. That's the going rate for wide receiver one. George Pickens on the year, 17th in the NFL in yards. He's 21st in catches. He's in the same general vicinity in targets. He dropped, and that's a kind way of putting it, a key third down and four in the Dallas Cowboys game. He fumbled away the Indianapolis Colts game. He's Deontay Pickens, folks. He's George Johnson. They play the game different. Deontay Johnson, he's a technician running his route. The whole route tree available to him. He's a yards after catch guy. He's shifty in space. Meanwhile, George Pickens, you throw the ball up 50-50, you expect that to turn into an 80-20 ball. Go up over the defense grab it off a guy's helmet, do the toe-tap thing. They're not equal in the way that they were created in the lab. One guy big, one guy small, one guy a great route runner, the other guy strong hands, goes up, plucks balls off a dude's face mask. But what do they both have in common? Good players, not great players. Wide receiver ones on this team but probably not on a lot lot of other teams around the NFL. They're just okay when compared to the greats of the game. Good players, not great players, and then you compare them to the greats, and you go, "Mm, they're just okay in comparison. The Steelers need a wide receiver, too. No, they got one. They need a wide receiver, one. They need a Devontae Adams. They needed a Brandon Ayuk. They need a guy guy to make George Pickens as effective as he can be if he'll even allow that mentally. Because that's the other thing. It's not just the production. It's not just that he goes missing for chunks of games and seasons at a time. Go back and look at the game log from last year. Last three games, good. Before that, previous six, seven, eight games, really, really bad. It's also that he's a malcontent. He's mercurial. He goes in the tank. Aren't those things we all said about Deontay Johnson? He's Deontay Pickens. He's George Johnson. He's not fighting with Minka Fitzpatrick. At least we haven't heard that. He's not maybe throwing punches at the backup quarterback at halftime of a Jets game, Deontay. But... His teammates don't want to sit with him on the bench. I'm sure the quarterback's fed up with him. Perhaps I've been told that the quarterback was one of those guys who walked away from George Pickens. Aditi Kinkabala was on with the PM team a couple of weeks ago and was talking about how guys were avoiding him on the sidelines. This guy needs the football. If he doesn't get it, he goes in the tank. I don't think CeeDee Lamb's going in the tank. He's going to voice his displeasure. The great ones do. The great ones want the ball. They lobby for the ball. They feel like catching the ball helps their team win. And yeah, the stats are great because there's fame, there's fortune. Duh. The greats want the ball, and they're going to work hard to get the ball. George Pickens wants the ball, ain't working hard, gets his snap count reduced. Now, is that the best way to get the most out of George Pickens if you're Mike Tomlin, if you're Arthur Smith in company? I don't know. Probably not. This doesn't seem like somebody who's going to take too kind to playing less. You just got to point to the end of the game when he grabs Jordan Lewis and throws him down by the face mask. The frustration boils over there. Last week, Broderick Jones had to get up in his face on the sideline to keep him away. 
from some of the key offensive minds. George, if you want the ball more, if you want to make an impact on the game, you got to work harder. He's going through the motions out there. He's not wide receiver one. I don't think the Steelers should have any designs on giving this dude $30 million a season, and I don't know how I'm going to get moved off that spot. Perhaps you can make an argument for George Pickens. I'd love to hear it. I'm not going to yell at you. 412-928-9370. He can go out there the next six weeks and put up big-time numbers, and in the back of my head, the whole time, I'm going to be thinking, when's he going to blow up? You lived with it with Antonio Brown because he's probably, nay, he is one of the great five receivers in the history of the NFL. So when he's acting a fool and throwing furniture off a balcony, things of that nature, flying down McKnight Road, there's so many I can't list them here. We'll be here all day. You put up with it because he's going to go out there against the Denver Broncos and have 15 catches for 200 yards on Chris Harris, who doesn't allow a touchdown all season long. That guy's 101. George Pickens is a highlight reel kind of guy, but he's not a consistent guy. And so if he's going to be a baby, and that's what he's being here, who's to say after four, five, six good games, at some point when the going gets tough, he's not going to go in the tank again? And I'm sure when people push back on me on this, they're going to call in and say, see what he looks like with Russell Wilson. Justin Fields has had a quarterback rating of over 90 in every game. Justin Fields in the Indianapolis game had a quarterback rating of over 100. You can't blame the quarterback play right now. He had a chance to make one of the key plays of the game And it goes right through his hands. And if you'll watch the All-22, Mike Tomlin, irate on the sideline. Why? Because he expects consistency out of the hashtag number one wide receiver. The guy who had the eye black on that said, open, bleeping, always. Okay, you were open. Ball got there. You don't even drop it. It goes right through your hands. If his hands were in front of his helmet... The ball would hit him right between the eyes. Got to catch it. How about don't fumble away the Indianapolis Colts game? When he's had the opportunities, he screwed that up too. That's a couple of examples right there. So do the Steelers need Devontae Adams? Hell yeah, they do. They need somebody other than Van Jefferson or Scotty Miller or Calvin Austin the third, and let me tell you, Roman Wilson ain't the answer at wide receiver number one or two to be the guy. Because George Pickens you can't count on. You can't pay him. And this offseason, I'm throwing this out there right now, they're not going to trade him during the year. This offseason they might. Because they already traded Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool and Antonio Brown. And the antics wore thin on them with Juju Smith-Schuster. There's a pattern here. Malcontents, sometimes they hang around longer than others, A.B., but I already told you why he was special, and you know that. They're probably going to move on from this guy because he's Deontay Pickens. He's George Johnson. And it doesn't seem like this new front office in particular puts up with crap like that. He's not going to get 30 million bucks. And be honest with yourself, you wouldn't pay him that either. And that's what it'll take to keep him around in all likelihood.